very hard to make a video with people in the house. But anyway, this is take four. This video is going to be a response for Miss Constance on a video that she just made. She just lost 20-something um, uh, subscribers. Uh, since I've started, I, you know, of course I lose one or two, you know, constantly. But uh, I made a certain video about uh, the Bible and Christians and I lost like 35 in one day. And then there was another time that I lost 22 and that's because I was uh, depressed, drinking, and I made a video and I kind of cursed at people. And it, it was a bad video and it was a low point in, in who I am. But uh, this is, this is um, you know, life and this is how we work it. But I'm reading a book right now, okay? It's called, let me see if I can get that to... Alephus Levi, Transcendental Magic. <clears throat> uh, there's a person that writes in the beginning of it, and he, he kind of explains how uh, Alephus Levi let out a lot of stuff about uh, the initiates and uh, adepts and these type of things, but at the same time, in certain aspects, maybe he's a little bit of a charlatan. I find him to be very... Uh, uh, I enjoy reading him. Um, in some aspects... You know, he reminds me of other people, um, Christian writers as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to read uh, a little piece of this part, and it's going to be, let me see what the uh, title is here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Come on, man. Make it easy on me. Okay, this is going to be under introduction still. <clears throat> uh, it's going to be on page 18 of Transcendental Magic. The Bible, with all its allegories, given expression to the religious knowledge of the Hebrews, is only incomplete and veiled manner. The book which we have mentioned, the heretic characters of which we shall explain subsequently, that the book William Postel names the Genesis of Enoch, certainly existed before Moses and the prophets, whose doctrine fundamentally identically or identical with that of the ancient Egyptians has also its exotericism and its veils. When Moses spoke to the people, says the sacred book allegorically, he placed a veil over his face and removed it when addressing God. This accounts for the alleged biblical absurdities which so exercise the satirical powers of Voltaire. The books were only written as memorials of tradition and in symbols that were unintelligible for the profane. The Pentateuch and the poems of the prophets were, moreover, elementary works alike in doctrine, ethics, and liturgy. The true secret and traditional philosophy was not committed to the writing until a later period, and under veils even more transparent. Thus arose a second unknown Bible, or rather one which, not, which was not comprehended by Christians, a storehouse, a storehouse, so they say, of monstrous absurdities. For in this case, believers confounded in the same ignorance speak the language of skeptics, a monument as we affirm that these compromise all philosophical genius and religious genius have ever accomplished or imagined in order of the sublime a treasure encompassed by thorns, a diamond concealed in a rude opec stone. Our readers, were, our readers will have already guessed that we are referring to the Talmud, the strange... How strange is the destiny of the Jews, those scapegoats, martyrs, and saviors of the world, a people full of vitality, a bold, hardy race, with persecutions, have we always perverted intact, excuse me, have we always preserved intact, little, little Freudian slip there, because it has not yet accomplished its mission, do not our apo apostolgetics traditions declare that after the decline of faith among the Gentiles, salvation shall again come forth out of the house of Jacob, and then that the crucified Jew who is adorned by the Christians will give the empire of the world in the hands of God the Father on penetrating into the sanctuary of Kabbalah one is seized with the admiration of the sight of doctrine so logical so simple and at the same time so absolute to the essential union and idea of signs the consecration and fundamental realities of the primitive characters the trinity of words letters symbols a philosophy simple as the alphabet profound infinite as the word, theorems more complete and luminous than the, that of Pythagoras, a, theologi, a theological, which was summed up by the fingers, an infinite which can be uh, held in the hollow of an infant's hand, 10 figures, 22 letters, a triangle, a square, and a circle. 
These are the entire elements of Kabbalah, which is also Pythagoras. These are the component principles of the written word, reflection of the spoken word, which was created, uh, the, which created the world. All truly dogmatic religions have issued for, from the Kabbalah and returned there within. Who, whatsoever is grand or scientific in the religious dreams of all illuminated Jacob Bohem, the Swedenborg, St. Martin, and it is borrowed from the Kabbalah. All Masonic associations owe it to their secrets and their symbols. The Kabbalah alone concentrates the allegiance of the universal reason and the divine word. It established by the counter, counterpose of two forces, apparently opposed the eternal balance of being. It is only... It only reconciles reason with faith, power with liberty, science with mystery. It has the keys of the present, past, and future. <sighs> so, the Bible is 100% allegorical, and it's allegorical because they, the profane. <sighs> Children. Revelation, if you're like in the Lutheran church, they don't even believe that the, that the revelation was in the Bible or should be in the Bible, should be included. Um, if you read the secret uh, doctrines, uh, the, you know, the secret origins of the Bible, you'll see that, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the Bible that they're not telling you about. A lot of, a lot of it is plagiarism. Now, that's not to say that the original works aren't you know, could straight be straight from God. But you know, the Sumerians are older, the Egyptians are older, Mesopotamia is older. Uh, you know, the pre masoretic texts, you know, they didn't take it back to the same people that they're saying in the New Testament are evil. We can get into all these things all day long. Uh, the bottom line is Miss Constance is a very good person and she's just trying to be truthful. And if you're going to be Christian, you're gonna to have to carry your sword proudly and you're gonna to have to get into this stuff and either refute it or uh, grow silent. Um, such is life. Uh, the secrets the secrets are just, it, you know, it's just revealing nature as a system, a mathematical system that you can see. The, you know, the Fibonacci sequence, right? All this stuff, so is above, so below, is, is mostly mathematics and it has a lot to do with nature. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to tell uh, everybody that I love them and that to keep an open mind and that uh, don't be racist, don't be judgmental, uh, don't be a culturalist. Enjoy who you are, where you came from, but it's a new day that's dawning and we need to wake up to it. They're either going to enslave us with all this, uh, with the machine, uh, or we're going to wake up and, and we're going to take control of the world again. This is Erica Covenant Love signing out. Thank you. Okay, a little more here. Returning to the fable of Oedipus, the crime of King of Thebes was that he failed to understand the Sphinx, that he destroyed the scourge of the Thebes without being pure enough to complete the e e expedition in the name of his people. The plague, in consequence, avenged speedily the death of the monster and the King of Thebes. Forced to abdicate, sacrificed himself in the terrible name of the th Sphinx. More alive and vicarious than ever when it would have passed from the domain of form into that of idea. Oedipus divided what was man and he put out his own eyes because he did not see what was God. He divulged, divulged half of the great Arcanium and to, have, and to save his people it was necessary for him to bear the remaining half of the terrible secret in exile and the tomb. After the colossal fable of Oedipus, we find the gracious poem of Psyche, which was certainly not invented by Opulus. The great magical Arcanium reappears under the figure of a mysterious union between a god and a weak mortal abandoned alone and naked on a rock. Psyche, was, Psyche must remain in ignorance of her secret of her ideal royalty, and if she should behold her husband, she would lose him. Here is Opulus uh, common commentates and interprets Moses. But did not the Elohim of Israel and the gods of Opulus both issue from the sanctuaries of Memphis and Thebes? Psyche is the sister of Eve, or rather is Eve, spiritualized. Both desire to know and lose innocence of honor of those of the ordeal. 
Both deserve to go to hell, into hell, one to bring back the antique box of Pandora, the other to find and to crush the head of the old serpent, who symbolizes time and evil. Both are guilty of the crime which must be exipated by the by the Prometheus of ancient days and the Lucifer of the Christian legend. The one delivered, the other overcome by Hercules and by the Savior. The great magical secret is therefore the lamp and dagger of Psyche, the apple of Eve, the sacred fire of Prometheus, the burning scepter of Lucifer, but it is also the holy cross of the Redeemer. To be acquainted with it sufficiently to abuse or divulge, it is to, it is to deserve all suffering, to know it as one should, namely to make use and conceal it. It is to be master of the absolute. Everything is contained in a single word, which consists of four letters. It is the tetragram of the Hebrews, the Azad of the alchemists, the Tot of the Bohemians, or the tarot card of the Kabbalists. This word expressed, expressed after so many manners means God to the profane, man for the philosopher, and imparts to the adept the final word of human sciences and the key to the divine, but only can be used and understand with the necessity of never revealing it. It's all allegorical symbolism, guys. All of it. God is unknowable and unnameable. You can see it. You can see the Creator everywhere. Mathematically, so I believe scientifically now. I mean, you should be able to see it scientifically at this point. Um, just food for thought, man. I hope you guys are well.